Hello, everyone. My name is Ramo Krause. I'm head of product management at Ravenol. This is my colleague, Alexander Nitid from product development. Today, we will be providing you with a bit more detail about ATF gear oils and transfer case oils. Ravenol has an excellent range of different gear oils. The special formulations of these oils are tailored to the wide range of different gear designs. So, Alexander, what's the difference between an engine oil and a gear oil? In general, engine oils are designed to lubricate the drive components inside the engine. So the piston, the cylinder wall, the piston rings, the entire engine structure, whereas gear oils are primarily designed to lubricate the gear components inside a transmission. So when you think about a gearbox, you've got the gear wheels that describe the various gears with synchronization rings in between that allow you to move from one gear to another. And all of these components are lubricated with gear oil. The great thing about gear oils, or what's special about gear oils, is the fact that they work within a closed system. Unlike an engine, where there is constant contact between the oil and the petrol, or between the combustion residues and the oil, gear oils involve a closed system where the entire transmission is cut off from the outside world and there's no contamination from the outside. The only thing that can occur is internal wear. That's the major difference between the two types of oils, if you like. That's really interesting, Alexander. But what types of transmissions actually are there? Let's start with Europe. The most commonly used system there is undoubtedly the manual transmission, which most viewers will know from their own car. You've got a gear stick, and you change gears manually. In the laboratory or in a technical context, we usually refer to this as MT, and the oils as MTF. This is followed by automatic gear oils for automatic transmissions. The corresponding oils are referred to as ATFs. A system that's less common, but that's becoming increasingly widespread, is the dual-clutch system. Oils for this system are known as DCTFs. Another system that isn't very widespread in Europe, but that we're seeing more of, is the continuous variable transmission, or CVT. The matching oils are called CVTFs. Okay. Okay. So what are the requirements for the gear oils, particularly regarding the various transmission types? The Ravenol transmission fluids are primarily aimed at the factory standards for the automotive industry. So the automotive industry, depending on which transmission manufacturer is being used for the particular car model, specifies factory standards that the transmission fluids need to comply with. So in principle, it's the transmission that stipulates what kind of oil is allowed to be used with it and what technical characteristics the oil needs to have. These technical characteristics are checked using laboratory tests or on test benches, and a quality check is conducted on the relevant technical parameters to ensure that all of the requirements have been met. And we've also got the large racing sector. There are factory standards here too, of course, because standardized engines or standardized transmissions are sometimes used here. Sometimes, however, these are used in extremely specialized applications, and in racing, there's a lot of testing. So you try things out and see whether they work, and then you change a few things and see whether things work better or worse. And in the racing industry, Ravenol gear oils are also put through their paces by renowned engineering companies such as Drexler and Samsona. Drexler assemblies are used in some high performance vehicles such as BMW Alpina vehicles, some examples being the B5, B6, M3, or the Z4, or can also be found in other high-performance vehicles by AMG, such as the C63. These also feature a Drexler transmission. By high-performance vehicles, we're particularly talking about vehicles in series production that are driven on public roads but that have a transmission with a technical design that's more reflective of a racing vehicle than a standard vehicle. This means that the things we learn from racing inevitably need to be incorporated in the Drexler transmissions so that the performance of a C63 on the road can be just as reliably guaranteed as that of a racing car. This is one of the particular challenges that arise when dealing with these types of high-performance vehicles. You've been talking about a lot of different engineering companies in the transmission sector. Do all of these companies have the same requirements for their transmissions, or do these vary? No, of course not. The requirements naturally differ depending on the transmission design and the transmission manufacturer, or on the installed assembly, which depends on the transmission. But a few fundamental technical characteristics can be defined so that you can assess whether a gear oil is good or not. 
A good example here would be, you have a transmission with running gear wheels that are practically dipping into the oil. You want to prevent the oil starting to foam up, because foaming oil will no longer lubricate. So the foaming behavior of these oils is always a very good criterion for quality. That's just one example. Another example would be, this transmission is transmitting very high torques. Because the engines are producing a lot of power, there's a high torque at the drivetrain that needs to be transmitted by the transmission. And the oil needs to be able to withstand these high loads acting on the gear wheels from the transmission. There are tests that can be carried out for this. Maybe we can touch on this again briefly later on. These would be the fundamental things. And of course, we've also got the viscosity classes that determine the viscosity of the oil, and which is first and foremost responsible for ensuring that it gets everywhere it's meant to and provides sensible lubrication. Is the lubrication film thick enough? Another aspect here is the cold start capacity. How will my transmission behave when it's minus 20 degrees outside and I try to set off when the gear oil is solid? This isn't particularly good for my transmission. That's why cold start characteristics are another important requirement that's increasingly being demanded by different transmission manufacturers and for different specifications. If the general requirements are the same everywhere, why does Ravenol have such a wide range of different gear oils? So I wouldn't say that they're the same everywhere, more that they're similar. So let's look at an example involving Mercedes. Mercedes produces 7G Tronic transmissions and 7-gear automatic transmissions. These need an oil from category... I just need to look this up. I think it was 236.14. That's a specification for this. This oil is classed as low viscosity. The successor model from Mercedes is the 9G Tronic. This runs on an ultra-low viscosity oil. This differs from other oils in that it's thinner in consistency. The transmission has a slightly different design. Its gap dimensions are a bit different. And the main aim of the oil is to get a bit more fuel economy, i.e. fuel savings. The 9G Tronic is also more fuel efficient. With a thinner oil, you're providing extra support for this fuel efficiency. And of course, the requirements for the gear oil vary depending on the generation of the transmission. Normally not by much, but certainly in a few areas. The 9G Tronic gear oil can't be used in the 7G Tronic, for example, because it's simply too thin. And the requirements set out by the individual manufacturers sometimes differ from one another significantly. And it's important to respond to these different requirements with suitable products. We are now at the 4-ball tester, and Alexander is going to explain what this device has to do with gear oils. Yes, that's right. But I think I'll need a bit of help from you. Sure. The four-ball tester is first and foremost based on four balls rubbing against one another. The four balls... Exactly. Open the drawer. Look just like completely normal ball-bearing balls. And these are fitted in the SKF ball bearings. So to use the device, you put three balls into this holder. And the whole thing is then secured by a retaining ring. Yes, exactly, by that part. This goes on top, and it's all fixed in place with a ring nut. A fourth ball is used as a counter to the three balls in this holder. The ball is clamped on at the top here and then rotates on the three stationary balls in the holder. With the oil, of course. This system can be used to carry out two different tests. The first is an anti-wear test. This test is performed under relatively low loads, so 40 kilograms, over a longer period of an hour. And at the end of the test, there are little wear marks in the half millimeter range on the three stationary balls here in the holder. And then we use this microscope. Can you pass that to me, please? So at the end of the test, you use this microscope or another microscope, but always one with a measuring scale, to measure the little wear marks. And the smaller the wear marks, the better the wear protection of the oil that was used. The other test that we can carry out is the EP test, or the extreme pressure test. This test describes the high pressure characteristics of the oil and provides information regarding the load-bearing capacity of the oil in a high load friction situation, such as between two transmission gear wheels. This test is particularly important for manual transmissions. In automatic transmissions, the wear protection is more important because the forces that occur between the gear wheels aren't as extreme with the ATFs. 
The EP test doesn't measure wear marks, but is carried out at relatively high lows. So from 200 kilograms up to the 500 kilogram mark. It's very, very short, just one minute long, and it tests various weight stages. You start at 200 kilograms and then move up by 20 kilograms at a time. At some point, there'll be a fusion. When the balls fuse together, they'll form a pyramid shape with the three balls at the bottom fused together with the load ball. And one stage below this fusion stage is referred to as still being a good force. So the oil can still manage okay. The test is then repeated multiple times in order to validate that the results match up. You can also use a device in a completely different way without any balls. This is known as the KRL test. This test doesn't measure fusion or wear or any other form of abrasion, but instead primarily measures how stable the oil is with long-term loading. This is based on... Yes, that's exactly it. It's a pan and it's heated up so we can have heating oil flowing through. There's a tapered roller bearing inside the pan. This tapered roller bearing is filled with oil. It's immersed in the oil, and it runs on a running surface and is put under load. The load weighs 500 kilograms. The test takes at least 20 hours. It can also have a longer running time, and the whole system is kept permanently at 60 degrees. This is the standard test. But of course, you can also carry out different test versions. The standard test, however, is 60 degrees, 500 kilograms, 20 hours. 500 kilograms is a relatively high load, so it would be around twice this weight, plus a little extra. This is already quite a lot of pressure, and the oil is, so it's a way of simulating the service life of the oil inside the transmission. And it also tests whether the loss of viscosity caused by this high load is still within the permitted limits. With gear oils, a loss of viscosity happens to all of them. It's just a question of how much and where it does occur. And the less viscosity loss an oil has over its service life, the better. There are also really clearly regulated specifications from the OEMs about this. And of course, you can go beyond this a little bit and make everything a little bit better. Thank you, Alexander. I mentioned the 9G Tronic from Mercedes. So, for example, we've not just met the requirements for the new G Tronic at Ravenol, but Ravenol has actually received an official approval from Mercedes-Benz. You can always see when there's an approval, particularly in the case of Mercedes, because there'll be the word approval between MB and the numeric code. I think we've all seen that somewhere, so maybe a 236.17 or 14 or 15. You can recognize the approval because it would say MB approval 236.17. And the Ravenol M9G series has an official approval from Mercedes-Benz, so it can also be used in the new G-Tronic transmissions. In general, the word approval on the bottoms or on the product information makes it very, very clear that the oil has been officially approved by the manufacturer. So these official manufacturer approvals are indicated by the word approval on the bottles or on the product information. As well as manufacturer approvals for renowned transmission manufacturers or for certain car manufacturers, there are actually additional requirements that you have for an ATF. And that's why Ravenol has developed the so-called multi-ATFs for a few special applications. These meet the technical minimum requirements. They're explicitly not designed to be used as a permanent solution in the transmission, but instead to top up a lack of transmission fluid, for example. It may be the case that an issue in the transmission causes a hole or a leak. No, let's not call it a hole, it's really a leak, where small amounts of gear oil can escape, meaning that we need to top up the gear oil. In this case, I'd recommend using the Ravenol Multi-ATF HVS or LVS. The H and L stand for high viscosity or low viscosity, depending on the type of gear oil that's been used. So let's look at an example to explain this more clearly. An older automatic transmission will in all likelihood run on a high viscosity oil. These would meet the Dexron 3H specifications, for example, so are high-vis oils. And more modern automatic transmission oils, such as those meeting the standard Dexron 6, are more at the low viscosity end, where the multi-ATF LVS would be the better option. As I've mentioned, these oils are not intended for permanent use. They're just for topping up, and they'll meet all of the technical minimum requirements for an ATF. And can I use the Ravenol Multi-ATF to top up or mix into the oil already in a transmission at any time? 
Exactly. That's what it's designed to do. Missibility is guaranteed at all times, and the additive formulation is compatible with all standard additives used in ATFs. As mentioned, the multi-ATFs are not made for permanent use. For permanent use, we recommend using products from Ravenol's ATF Pro line. These are specially designed for the particular transmission type and precisely meet the requirements aimed at the permanent use of the gear oil. Up to now, we've been talking about our existing product range, but what will this look like in the future? Are there any trends in the transmission sector when it comes to gear oils? In principle, there are similar trends in the transmission sector as in the engine sector. Everything is getting smaller and smaller and more and more powerful. So we're always talking about downsizing and performance upgrades. And fuel economy is a huge topic too. You're always looking for more power with less fuel consumption. Another important topic is that of weight and size reduction. This is, of course, related to downsizing, but if I build a smaller engine, I'm not actually gaining anything if I need a larger transmission. I therefore try to build a smaller transmission as well. And this causes the oil requirements to change accordingly, too. If everything gets smaller, the technical parameters that I need for the oil will change as well. And then we've got the issue of longevity. Anyone who drives a car with an automatic transmission, and let's take Mercedes as an example, knows that the transmission needs to be replaced every 60,000 kilometers. So this, of course, poses the question, can this replacement interval be extended? We had this with an engine, too, increasing it from 15,000 to 30,000 kilometers, for example. And of course, this is also an issue for ATFs. You previously mentioned the Ravenol Professional line. What exactly is this? The professional line includes not only ATFs, but also transfer case oils. And it's primarily characterized by the fact that these products have received approvals from major well-known manufacturers, and in particular German manufacturers. So these are premium products that can be used in the latest and most state-of-the-art transmissions. Okay, Alexander, thank you for your clear and detailed explanation. I hope we managed to teach you something about the topic of ATF gear oils and transfer case oils, and explain why Ravenol has such a comprehensive product range. Thank you very much for watching. Ravenol, the lifeblood of your car.